Let's take a look at the 60 minute chart of the S&P 500, which you can see right here. The gray area is the area of the overnight trading, which certainly a lot happens overnight these days. And then the white area is the normal pit trading. What happened on Sunday? Well, it was like what trade war? Everybody was thinking that, well, they could already see the end of the trade war. And we got rally that started Sunday night all the way through Monday. We had a good up day on Monday. There was some news that came overnight here on Brexit turmoil and uh, Prime Minister May may be in trouble and that got the market softer uh, after an attempted rally and then we had a choppy day here on Tuesday. Tuesday uh, late in the day President Trump came out with his list of 200 billion more uh, of products that will have China tariffs on them and the market got hammered overnight. You can see that and then all of a sudden the news came out that China was considering retaliation on tariffs uh, and uh, that it may actually not be uh, anything that significant because later on came the news that, well, they were looking to use that as an opportunity to build other trade partners. Wednesday, you can see that the market tried to rally and then failed. Um, there was a report um, in here that, uh, that sovereign wealth funds were uh, strongly cutting equity exposure over the next three years, and that also was due to the trade war and a report that uh, foreign investment in the U.S. had dropped sharply in 2017. That's uh, an old report, but the markets didn't really like that. And oil plunged on that day. Oil down $3.46, a loss of 466 on the tariffs and the fact that Saudi is pumping plenty of oil. Uh, so that got the big break in oil that we were actually looking for. Here's where that China sh strategy shift came, where they were going to woo more trading partners versus a potential big tariff response. And the NATO member got in line right over here where the president's strategy apparently worked. Uh, on Thursday, uh, Mnuchin came out and said that China talks basically were broken down, but the, store, the door is still open to further talks. And uh, he says, I don't really think we're in a trade war. What exactly would you call this when it's a tit-for-tat tariff thing going on? Uh, and then uh, Speaker Ryan came out and he says he doubts that Congress will uh, act to stop the tariffs. Friday we got a rally overnight that failed as uh, we got news out that bank earnings uh, were mostly showing weakness in revenues. The banks have been very weak. And it's going to be hard to get much of a rally going in the stock market without the financials actually getting some traction on the upside. And then the Fed semi-annual report came out, and they said gradual rate hikes still, higher inflation still, stronger labor market still, and the, that asset prices were elevated. We had a rally going here on Friday, and when that report came out, uh, a little bit of chop came in and the market essentially stopped uh, moving towards the upside. So that's a look at what happened and all of the background news that mm, caused some movement in the markets this week. So uh, let's take a look here as we look at the S&P 500 SPX on the daily chart. And you can see this uh, really busy chart and you will see that we can identify the cyclic rhythms that are in here. And what we had expected was that this period right in here was going to bring the last of the corrections. You can see that we thought that the next low was 722 to 726. This is now 713. However, the shape and patterns of the intermediate uh, uh, chart say that it's likely that we have seen the worst of it on the downside. We're getting up to these Fibonacci areas where it failed from before and now moving through it. So that's all very strong. We had this abandoned baby right over here, which generally would be a market uh, a point to realize that there would be a top and it's now moved up through it. So when you get these signals that don't work, you can really get a sense for the strength that we're seeing. However, 
based on the patterns in here, you can see that we're in like right over here, where we're or right over here, where these nested cycles come in right over here. Uh, this is the NASDAQ and the Russell, this is the Dow, this is the S&P. So again, that period that we're looking at, 722 to 726, is in the next you know, five to eight trading sessions. So that says that we're likely to get into this little corrective period. We're going to call for uh, this area to give it some problems and for it to be a kind of curling over weekend here, as you can see, maybe a little higher and then come down. Uh, and we're going to look for a test of supports in here. The, the minor uh, number right over here, that minor 23, let's just get a closer look uh, for you right in here. That minor 23% fib right there, is it around 27.79? We think that's likely it's going to get there and break it. These minor rising supports right over here at around 27.60, uh, that is really maybe a little bit more of a likelihood of where it trades down to in this little minor corrective period. I want you to note that momentum now has established back to the upside right there. And that, uh, again, is likely to give continued support to the market. So Slim Ribbon uh, right in here, also some sense of support. So this area between 2760, 2779 really looks like the area that it will dip down into in some minor pullback. But then again, you get into this stronger period again after that. And we really think that um, the odds are growing that we're going to see a test sometime in we're going to say august of the 2872 number on the upside in the s p 500 uh, and how it acts around that area will be pretty significant uh, for us so uh, the next week week and a half we're going to look for a minor corrective period in the stock market in what really looks like an upward resumption to us as we take on what is our first uh, bullish uh, stance in the market in quite a while. That decline, that corrective period, the period of high risk that we talked about, only brings 100 points in the S&P on the downside. And when you do that, it, it sets up a continued upward trend. And we have to be agnostic. We have to say bullish or bearish. Whatever the charts say, well, that's what we're going to believe. I'm going to